OTAN Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. Okay, hello. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Julie Casperson Schultz, and I'm an ESL faculty member at Sierra College. I've been teaching in the community colleges for about uh, about over 10 years. And before that, I was an ESL and EL civics coordinator and teacher in adult education, um, in an adult education program. And my colleague is here to join me today. Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. So I'm Marcia Brock, I'm also ESL faculty at Sierra College. Sierra College is a community college in the Northern California area. If you're not from here, um, north of Sacramento. And um, I uh, have been in the community college system for 20 years, but before I was full-time, I was a freeway flyer and worked at different colleges. And um, I just love teaching and I'm very excited to be here and show and share Canvas with you all. Thank you, all right. Um, just a second. Um, okay, so um, transitioning to online learning and making it work. I wanted to tell a little story before we get to our modules. So, um, so when we were when we're on ground in our classroom community, it kind of reminds me of the picture when every, when we're community building. It's inclusive, engaging, fun, challenging, welcoming. When we're on ground all together in person, and so when COVID hit, um, I felt like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How am I going to community build? How are we going to be inclusive, engaging, fun, challenging, welcoming when we're not even with our students? And I was like, what am I help? How what, what do we do? So I was very worried that my students would just um, look at the computer and, and, and just freak out and, and drop class and not, not continue. But my goal was that ESL students would be confident and happy learning online and that we will have fun practicing together on Zoom. So that, that was my goal. So in comes Canvas. That's our learning management system that we use at Sierra College. And we just want to tell you a little bit about Canvas and about our program at Sierra just a little bit before we start sharing our modules. So what is Canvas? It, Canvas is the uh, common course management system, CMS, or learning management system, LMS, for all of the California community colleges. Um, Canvas is intuitive, so whether students are on their cell phones, laptops, you know, desktops, whatever, um, the screen changes and modifies to fit their devices. It's flexible, it allows customization to uh, support a range of pedagogical styles. So we can do different things, we can be creative and, and show, um, deliver instruction in different ways, however it best fits our teaching styles. And it's dynamic and cloud-based, so they are continually improving it and teachers can even make recommendations. Like, I'd like to, I'd really like to see that you do this for faculty or for students. Can you change this feature, add this feature? And they often listen to voices in the field. Um, and so Marcy is gonna talk about this part. Right, so what I love about Canvas, it, it, it gives you the opportunity to really engage students, communicate with students and very easily um, with discussion boards, announcements. I will be showing you hands-on um, that interaction, uh, simple and easy for instructors and students. Um, it does, it's fully supported 24 seven. Um, so if you are in a bind, something happens, you get complete technical support. Um, the other thing that I find it really great about Canvas is it because it is quite popular, it's very easy to go to YouTube and find a video on how to do something really quick. I've been there, done that, um, but you get a lot of help. So it's, it's, it's not scary to use, trust me. Um, and uh, also I will be demonstrating um, the different aspects, but it's very, very easy to do. I, I have to tell you that I'm not a techie person at all, never have been. Um, I was the type of person that even didn't, didn't wanna do Excel spreadsheets or anything like that. And uh, when I started using Canvas, it was just very, very easy and simple, so. 
And so it's efficient. It allows us to do our grading very easily and efficiently and students get immediate feedback. Like if they take a quiz and it's multiple choice, there's, they'll see their score right away. Um, yeah, I'll be talking about that. It's a lot of fun, actually. And, and, uh, and then they get teacher feedback. We can say, great job, or you know, here's something to work on so we can give immediate feedback like that that students can receive. And they like that. OK. Um, Marcy, is it here? Yes, so Canvas is, uh, so here in California, we have a strong community college system and it's used in all of the community colleges, a few of the uh, UC and state colleges, UC Berkeley, UC Irvine, San Francisco, uh, San Jose State, and then also private um, Stanford and Santa Clara. So all the tiers of <laughs> um, higher education in the state. Um, so we want to tell you a little bit about Sierra College. So before COVID-19, many instructors used Canvas for basic things like grades and assigning videos to watch before the next class. Um, right. and, I'm going to talk about that. Okay. Yes. So, so the, like we were using it as a flipped classroom, watch a video for homework, come back and we'll discuss it or, or blended learning. Because when we were on ground, we were still using Canvas a little bit to supplement the instruction. And, um, and so now at Sierra College, all our classes are asynchronous campus wide, but ESL instructors have the option of scheduling optional synchronous Zoom meetings. And Canvas is used as the instructional platform for all of our departments. Yes, I, I want to say that I'm very grateful um, to have been able to use Canvas because uh, we had had Canvas for a while, about 15 years. And, but what I really love about Canvas is the fact that you can use, you can start by using it as little or as much as you want. And I think that's very welcoming. So because we weren't before COVID, we were not forced. We just had it as, um, you know, was it, we were incentivized to use it, but it was not, and we were not um, in any way coerced to use. And so I started it very gradually and without any pressure, very user-friendly. That's, I guess, what I'm trying to say. And, uh, I, and I was incentivized to use it by the fact that I was very interested in flipping the classroom and saving that classroom environment for real, meaningful, communicative activities. And so having the students watch videos on Canvas, read materials on Canvas, and then come to the classroom and really have um, um, not, you know, waste, quote, unquote, time, um, and, and just have that really good interaction. So I will say that um, it, Canvas is really wonderful um, for blending, uh, blended learning, integrating hybrid, or just using it as much or as little as you need to. So I was never an online teacher. I still do not consider myself an online teacher, but the fact that Canvas was so friendly and I started using bits and pieces of it, I'll tell you really quick one, how the first, the very first thing I used Canvas for was uh, announcements. And the reason is because um, at community college, we give homework and I would write the homework on the board or sometimes I would get little, you know, pieces of paper. Here's your homework. And then I would always have a few students next class meeting say, you know what? Um, you never told us to do that or you didn't give us the page number or what that and you never said that. And um, so I said, OK, now uh, we have Canvas, we have videos. The thing that I want you to do is check your homework on announcements. So I would send a message on announcement with the very detailed of what the homework is. So every time a student would say, well, you never said that. I didn't do the homework because you never told me to do it. I would show, okay, here's the message and there it is. So um, it was, you know, and that's how I started just with the homework thing. Then I start, and then after that, I started adding videos and adding materials, but very user-friendly. Yes, and so um, not not was not an online teacher. So when we did mid semester um, have to move online, my biggest uh, stress was actually learning Zoom because even though we had Zooms um, uh, applications in our computers, I had never used Zoom in my life, and so going to that forty minute training and trying to figure out how to do breakout rooms and and all those features of Zoom were more stressful for me than actually um, putting materials and using Canvas. Um, and 
so um, that I, I just wanted to share that part uh, because Julie, in fact, is way more techie than I. <laughs> I'm learning. Okay. Um, so, oh, so um, when we went, when we started, began teaching, um, when we went high, when we went remote, sorry, um, and we started using Canvas, you know, solely, um, it, they, our, our campus provided a lot of training for us and, but also for students. It is, it is a challenge um, to be able to, for our students to be able to you know, use Canvas in the way that it's expected. So we need to provide a lot of support for our students. So this is some of the ways Sierra College supports students. Our ESL department, we offer a two week training or tech orientation at the beginning of the semester for our lower level students. So we have like an open live Zoom session hours that we're there waiting. Hello, students can come in and ask questions. We can share screens and help them. And then we also support all ESL students during the semester with open weekly Zoom hours, um, staffed by our instructional assistant. For that's for all levels. Beginning, we try and focus on the beginning levels, and then we continue it all semester, a few hours a week with our instructional assistant. Um, we also have past peers or embedded tutors, and they're just invaluable. They're right there in our classes in Canvas as, um, I believe they're as tutors um, or instructional assistants, and so they can comment on students' work and um, provide support for the students. Uh, and also they work in the virtual tutor center, so students can use them for additional tutoring outside of our class if we decide to have Zoom sessions. And then through the CARES Act, we've been able to give students laptops and we also loan them hotspots, earbuds and webcams. So those are the ways that they're supported at the college. Um, and then some resources that have an, um, sort of inspired my teaching in this, I've been teaching a long time, but in recently the last year or so, I, these couple of books I wanted to share, The Missing Course by David Gubler. And I love this book, Culturally Responsive Teaching and the Brain by Zaretta Hammond. And then I have to say thanks to my very special colleague who I've never met. Her name is Lori Woods and she is from Cuyamaca College, but she has really helped me and guided me and mentored me in my, um, the way I teach on Canvas because you can also yesterday or Wednesday, I think they had a, a, a little session on sh um, Canvas Commons and how to, how to share your information and then download um, other. So we share, we share modules, we share materials and, um, I was able to get a lot of her materials off of the commons in Canvas and then create my class based on the way she set up her modules. And I'll talk about that. So um, again, my name is Julie Casperson Schultz and Marcy Brock and here are our emails. And then we have a couple minutes for questions and then we're gonna go right into sharing, uh, taking you right in our Canvas courses, showing some student work and the way we, we set up things. So um, do we have questions? Not yet. I don't see anything in the chat, folks. Remember that you can use the chat for questions or comments. And um, if anybody wants to unmute and ask anything so far, otherwise, uh, we'll continue. Okay. Looks like we're good, ladies. Okay. Now, Marcy. Okay. All right. So um, I will go ahead. And uh, <clears throat> so hi, everybody. So this is uh, the Sierra College website and uh, very uh, user friendly. So here, uh, that's where students uh, click, they click on Canvas. And I just have its uh, username, password, and then they go to their courses. And um, so when you, when they, click on their course, the first thing they get is something called the home page. Um, so I'll be talking about the navigation bar and other things. But the home page is great because it's a live page. It can be edited. Um, oh, and I actually do that, as you can see um, in, in yellow here, it's some urgent messages, go to Zoom. Um, I try to update, welcome to, we are in week six. So I put that, that way it's the first thing they see. But then I tend to keep the homepage as is. Um, and this is a, in the beginning of the semester, this is what it looked like. It started with welcome 
up to our class. And as you can see, you put photos, you can put um, Zoom links for, uh, there's a, a link for um, an orientation. So students, and I'll show you in a minute. Um, so this is our instructional assistant. She's our tech support. I, I happen to have two tutors for this class. Um, here's my video embedded on just saying hello and telling them about where to go in the navigation. And then there's actually um, a Zoom link that uh, shows the students uh, where the navigation bar is, just kind of showing Canvas. Um, so I leave that there, but I'm able to just um, kind of tweak the, the, the top of it, which is the part that they see right away when they get into Canvas. Um, Call for Zoom. So the so what I do is I move the conf, the Zoom schedule to the very top, so they don't have to scroll up and down. Um, so our class Zooms are in Confer Zoom, and then the tutor sessions um, they have to click on on links because they're in the tutor center. So it's a different system. But what I love about uh, Canvas is the ability to having uh, of having Zoom right here. Um, so, uh, well, let me talk a little bit about uh, the, before I go to Comfort Zoom, the reason I have Comfort Zoom on top. So this is our navigation bar. And what I love about it is uh, you go to settings and you are able to hide a lot of the items. So my students are basic students. I don't want to confuse them. I want to make it as simple as possible for them to navigate. So I actually hide, if you can see here, that they cannot see these um, links right here on the navigation bar. So you can um, hide and or show as much as you want, customize. The other thing you can do is you can change the order of the, the, the buttons here in navigation. And so what I do is I put the ones that they really need to use up on top. So I consider Zoom one of the main things we do. Um, so I want to make it very easy for them. So I put it as the first one. It, like I said, when they log in, it defaults to home. So defaults to home, they see the crucial thing. Here's the Zoom schedule in case they didn't copy or they want to be reminded. I don't change it. The, the, our Zoom schedule stays consistent the whole for 16 weeks, the whole semester. But when you click on Confer Zoom, and I can make this bigger for you guys if you need to a little bit. Um, but what I love about it is that um, it's very little work for you. So in the beginning of the semester, you can click on schedule and make um, the schedule recurring Zooms for the whole semester. Um, of the whole 16 weeks. So here, for example, on Monday, I'm, I have office hour from three to four, then I have, we have our classroom at 6.15, Tuesdays and Wednesdays also. Uh, but what is great about it, and it's happened to me before, is that, okay, I set up the Zooms for the whole semester. I completely forgot about holidays, right? So <laughs> um, very easy to go back there and just delete the holiday one. Or if you're ever sick and you don't feel well, okay, I go to announcements, um, I send them a message, then I go to the homepage, and then I'm able to come here and actually delete the Zoom um, if I'm sick and we're not going to meet that time. And that way they're not lost in la la land trying to get to class in case they didn't get the email, the announcement and the homepage of me saying, sorry, I'm sick today. Um, so very easy to customize and um, and to change. And I, I just really like the fact, I don't even have to think about it. It's there, it's consistent. Um, they find it very easy to, easy to do. Um, then, um, so what, what I was talking about that making the top ones um, are the ones that they're gonna use to make it easier for them. So in this uh, basic class, um, besides Zoom and Home, then the next thing uh, I want them to do is click on announcements. So announcements are, our interaction. So one thing that I do in the very beginning of the semester is I ask my students to download the Canvas app on their smartphone and to turn on notifications. 
free app. Wonderful, works really well. Like Julie said, it's very customized to different devices. So that way, and I promise, I tell them, you know what? I promise I will not be sending you announcements in the middle of the night. So they turn it on, what happens is their phone beeps, they know they have an announcement. Also, every announcement you do goes to their email so they can see it on Canvas. They can also see it on email. It's, uh, it automatically goes there. Love about announcement is so here, for example, it's my tutor Vilma. So she communicates with them, I communicate with them. And one feature that is really great is you can say reply to this announcement um and i had one in the beginning of the semester so what happens is um student if students don't understand the message for example um they can just click here on reply open a box type a message okay don't understand click post and then you'll be able to to see if there's a problem with your message you know um so that makes it very interactive. One thing that I do remind students to always check is the, um, the date of the announcement because sometimes we'll say, come today. I try to say, come today, Monday, come today, Friday. Uh, but here it has the date. Um, another thing, oh, one thing that Canvas does have, it, I'm in a teacher view right now, but you can go to student view right here and if you click on student view it's fantastic because you see exactly what the students see and how the students see canvas which will be different from how you see it because as a teacher you can hide a lot of things from students as i will be showing you uh, which is to our advantage so that everything is ready to go so you the I call it hide, but the tech, the term in Canvas is publish and unpublish. So you can uh, publish things, unpublish things, hide, unhide <laughs> things from students. So the student view is really helpful. Um, so announcements is my communication tool with students primary. So like I said, I like putting things on the home screen, but then I'll cut and paste, click on announcements, click on um, new announcement and boom, send them an announcement. Okay, so again, keeping with the order, um, I, where's the class? Okay, I'm online or I'm hybrid or I'm blended. Where's the class material? Where do I go? How do I learn? Where's the stuff? So very easy, modules. Um, the way I like to um, show modules. Just say leave, Marcy, because it, because oh. you put it, you- Sorry, like, sorry about that, guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the, the, yeah, the, the way I like to explain modules is like this. So think about a filing cabinet. So the module is the drawer of your filing cabinet. And then pages, which I hide from students because they don't need to see all uh, 1 million pages I have of uh, class material, so it's hidden. The pages are the files, right? And the modules is the actual drawer. Now, what is, so you can have as many pages in the module as you want. And what I absolutely love about it is that you can organize it whichever way you want. So for example, uh, we have 16 weeks in the semester. So I like to do it two ways, actually. I have um, by week, which you can see here, week six started, I, my weeks always start on Monday and end on Sunday by midnight. And so they have seven days to do the work. And um, so I like to do it by week. But one thing I have changed recently, for example, in the organization of the modules is I used to have one, two, three. So when we were in week eight, and so on and so forth, students have to scroll all the way down. Well, you know, our students struggle with technology and some of them, even though I said, this is the most important thing you ever have is your mouse. Some of them are still doing the finger. Okay, so what I do do is I put the current module on top. So we are in week six, that's what you see. As you scroll down, you'll see week five, so it goes back. Everything can stay open for them all the time, which is great. So I say, you know what? You didn't study last week, go back to week five and study it. It's open seven days a week, um, 24 hours a day. And so you can organize this whichever way by week, 
But what I really love about it is the fact that you can also have it by skill. So for example, as you get, when I finish my uh, finals here, week 14, 15, 16. Okay, so for example, um, I still have, as you can see, it, all of this is hidden from students. So this is for my benefit. So I have a reading module where I have a reading, we did reading circles in the classroom, right? I have a listening module. Um, you can have a writing module. I have a conference module. Uh, <laughs> so with things that I want to demonstrate to you guys. So you can, there's no limit to how many modules you can have and how you want to organize it. Um, the other thing that I love about modules is uh, so I, I so this is what the students can see and I do have discussions quizzes grades people syllabus all the things here but the two things that they have to do is go to modules the materials are there and then the quizzes and discussions which are activities that my students in this basic level do every week um, are embedded in the module. So for example, here in week six, it's quite long. So these are all, all uh, material I'll be showing you guys. But so at the bottom of week six, because it's due on Sunday, they have a quiz and a discussion. So they don't have to be clicking on quizzes and discussions and trying to find which one do I need to take? No, you go ahead and you put it right in the module. So it's week six, they're doing quiz seven. In week five, for example, they did quiz six. Um, so it's just very organized for them. Uh, all you know so basically they're using comfort zoom home announcements modules they don't need to do this so i technically could hide these two buttons if i wanted to make it even simpler for them um but one button that i think is absolutely fantastic is the people button because they uh, and very interactive because by clicking on the classmates they can email the classmates um, they can also email me and, oh, Julie happens to be here too. <laughs> you can, oh, you can add, um, you can talk to your Canvas administrator and add a coworker to your Canvas. Um, so We often do that. So we put each other in our classes so we can see um, what are they doing? How are they doing things? How's my colleague doing things? And then we can learn from each other. So our uh, instructional assistant, our techie person, the person who helps students with all the technology, Zoom and Canvas, Maria Hernandez, she's right here. So they can just click on her name and send her an email. So, and myself, the tutors, the, uh, and each other. So what that does is there's no need to memorize people's emails anymore. You really are in the community of learners with two clicks, boom, you're sending each other email and you, you can study together. Um, Canvas, of course, has a 24 hour uh, tutor and um, all, all, all other great goodies and great things. Uh, so, but I, like I said, um, I, I try to keep it very user-friendly and simple for my students, especially with the technology. Um, because, uh, you know, we get fooled sometimes because our young students look very techy, they have their smartphones, but that does not necessarily translate to knowing how to do online work and understand Canvas. So that's why we need to have the orientation. So this is, a Julie will do more advanced things, but this is for my beginner class. So I always have um, in the first two weeks, even though we do the orientation, I have these pages where, you know, uh, what is home? What is comfort Zoom? I explain to them and I read this and talk about it um, when we are in orientation. And then this link here is the Zoom orientation of Canvas, kind of like what I'm doing right now with you guys. Um, but so when you are in modules, so here we are in a page inside of modules, um, you can just click next, which is also helpful. So you don't have to get in and out and in and out. So you, click next. you just click next, 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 and, and previous. Away. 
through their yeah, modules to go back. So um, I want to show you some examples of pages that I have created for this beginner class. So for example, one of the topics is volunteer work. So I, because it's a beginner class, I like, I, I, I prefer not to put too many links um, and, and so that they don't have to go out and get lost. So what I basically do on my pages is I type on my pages. I ask them to copy in their notebook. Everything that they read, they need to copy. Um, so this is, for example, it's a speaking activity and it's about kindness. Uh, so we have a warm up. So these questions, I type them there. They can look at them and think about them. And then in Zoom, I share the screen and we start talking about, is it important to be kind? Then I have this great little um, video that it has no sound, but it's a story. <laughs> It does have music, but this very selfish guy and how he doesn't help anybody. Until one day he does help and it changes his life. So what's important? What, what is the importance of being kind? Um, also, I show students how, you know, they can make the screen big or they can make them small. Um, to fit their screen. Then I have some post video, um, or speaking conversation questions. Again, I would be doing this in Zoom, but the students can start um, uh, doing this with their tutor or by themselves at home. So then I click next. So that was a speaking activity. This is a writing activity, for example. They're starting to write a paragraph. So I have the warm up questions. Uh, the, the, topic is favorite item. But so I just type it there. Um, and like very, very user friendly, you can use different fonts, however you want to do it. It is a, you know, it's a live page. So you can cut and paste. So if you have Word documents, you can just copy into Canvas page um, directly. So you don't have to retype everything you've done. Very easy to insert pictures. So I talk about my favorite item is my, uh, my aunt's piano. Um, then uh, we do have studio, which is very helpful. Then I insert, um, there is a video of me. So they Let's take me home. change to we. So I'm speaking very slowly. Um, Studio gives us the option of closed captioning. So you click on CC, you click on English. So Let's now change to Vilma and I. Marcy, I'm going to about a five minute. More. Okay. okay. Oh, already. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know. <laughs> uh, time flies. We're we have time. Time. <laughs> I just have, I just really, um, uh, enjoy using canvas and so again you put in pictures this is a profession so it's a woman welder and then again my video I like dialogues so this is a dialogue that I've created again customize it um, then I read the dialogue to them with closed captioning I really want to show you guys the the quizzes here's another dialogue Again, using lots of photos, using my video. I hear I have two, there's no limit to the number of videos you can insert on the page and number of illustrations and materials. Um, so this is a discussion. A discussion is a very interactive feature. So I wanna show you this one because this is a grammar one. And here are my students. So here's, uh, they posted their answers. And what is really great is they all, after they post their answer, they're able to see their um, classmates work. So here, for example, Mayadi says, excellent job. So they communicate with each other. We do a little bit of netiquette in the beginning. So they, they can also correct. Uh, so here it says, it was perfect. The other one says, well, I think you need to use capitalization. So, and then my corrections, my feedback. So after they post all their work, I give them feedback. This is another discussion. This one, they have not done it yet. Um, let me just move on because I really want to show you guys the quizzes. Um, 
So, oh, I had a bunch of discussions. So you can use it for reading, writing, listening. Um, they can post videos. Um, okay, so uh, this is a listening quiz. So I really, what I really love about the quiz is they're so easy to make. And for my basic class, I use multiple choice and true and false only. But what is really great about it is, for example, you can insert your video. So here's my video. 17. 17 and they 17. have to mark, is it 70 or 17? Um, so this whole video, it's a listening video. So this whole video is um, is with my videos. Oh, I think I have to get out of there, Julie, just a minute. Just, um, yeah. Okay, I'm just making go, it. Go I'm just gonna make this quick, yeah. Um, okay. Show your final exam. <laughs> I do wanna show you the final, I'm sorry, but I really do. No. I'm so proud of this. I, I'll, uh, and uh, let me say something for those of you who do not give quizzes. I know it is called quiz, but what it really is, it's a really fun activity. My activity, my students are so excited about this. It's like a video game for them. They love clicking. I start with very easy questions. So they love their ability to click and then they get instant feedback once they finish. Finish. They can take it one, two, three, ten times. After the last time they finish, they get the feedback correct and correct. And it's just really fun. They are excited to do this. It is like a fun video game for them. It's not stressful. Um, they do get points because we are in community college. Um, I, you can put a video directions, written directions and all of that. But I wanted to show you is that you can mix and match in your quiz. You can have just a straightforward, just type an answer as multiple choice. You can have, um, so just like this, fill in the blank. They click on the right answer and go, you know, keep going. Um, you can, like I said, put in the video and here I, I ask a question. Where is Sierra College? But they can click on my video uh, 20 times. So there is no, they do have a time limit to take the quiz, but they can click many times. So uh, you can have, you know, we have multiple level students. You can also have, you know, my question, here's the present continuous. What are they doing in the picture? What are they doing in the picture? So that you can put your video and the picture. And then I want to make sure they're clicking the right uh, grammatical form. Um, so again, inserting pictures. Um, you can put a video. So here's a little YouTube video for them to watch. Um, it doesn't have any words and after and again they can watch many times and then they can uh, fill in the blanks um, fill in the words for the sentences complete sentences uh, with the information from the videos and um, um, I, I do have Malala and so the uh, I have true and false for Malala. Again, I try to make it as, as interesting for them. Sometimes I, uh, Julie will show you some of the funny pictures she puts, um, but it's, it's just pretty. It's nice. They enjoy it. It's fun. It's not a stressful thing to do. So I will stop <laughs> and we will be going Thank over you. some um more advanced i don't know if we should look at the chat right now or... yeah i think it's a good yeah. time to stop a second oh i see it actually nada <laughs> oh good I okay one. and marcy it says i've never used krista said i've never used canvas before but i have used other lms systems is it challenging to set up i i had used i think it was d2l at american river college um and I mean, there is a learning curve. I'm not going to say you could just get on there and you're good to go. I, I did. We've done a lot of training. You know, um, when, if your call, if your if your school site gets set up with Canvas, I'm sure they're going to offer lots of trainings. And you can just start really simple. You know, that's the nice thing about Canvas. Maybe just start with announcements. Maybe just start with like a little quiz. You just a little bit by little bit. But as you're learning, you could add on. But there is. I would say there is a. There, there is a learning curve and right. um, the more well, you want to take it, the more trainings you can do. Um, but it's there, it can, it can be very incremental and non-threatening. So for example, the first time I did a quiz, I didn't put videos or pictures. No, right. I just typed the question and then I just clicked multiple choice and I typed the answers and then I clicked on the right answer and I clicked save. That's all I did. And then I thought, hmm, maybe I should try to add a picture that is going to make it fun for students but anyway you can start really small okay thank you and i'm going to share so marcy shared about how canvas kind of looks for students and sort of the navigation 
and she shared about modules. And I'm just going to go directly into one week's module. It was actually last week's module. And I'm going to show you how that how it looks and how I structure them um, each week, because they're pretty much the same. I, I try and keep it the same. So I'm going to show you my class, which is um, uh, it's the next level after Marcy. And it's a reading writing class. And it's uh, grammar is integrated in there also. And it's again, it's the Marcy teaches our beginning level and I'm the next level. And in my level, we're reading two books. One is Seed Faults. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Seed Faults and the other is Gold Rush. So my modules are built around our readers. So this is my homepage and I made this on Canva. Somebody did a workshop on Canva yesterday or Wednesday I noticed. So I put a little, I think it's called a GIF or GIF or something. I put just to make it fun. I'm really into making my pages look fun and funny and interesting. And I get a lot of feedback from students. Oh, this class is not only fun, but it's funny. So I'll try and add it. That's kind of what I like to do. Um, and so when I go to modules, this is this would be like week five. This was last week. So every week in my module, I have a welcome and I try and change the picture. So I made a little bit moji. So every week I'll have a different different some different saying or different picture and um, and then the students get to see what what they're getting ready to do this week so it's a little like a little preview for what they're going to learn in the week so they then they can read this and continue we just go to next and so next they're going to read the chapters in seed folks and I've uploaded I just found this on YouTube thank goodness somebody it's an hour and 54 minutes somebody had read the whole book Somebody um, I already did that. I didn't have to do that. So whatever I can find and integrate, I feel like is, is great. Um, so, um, and that's an easy way that you can put things into Canvas from outside. So this is a YouTube video. And so I just tell students, I actually usually tell them where to start and where to stop because it could be confusing because this is two hours and they only read a little bit each week. So I tell them where to start and where to stop. And then I tell them to follow along in their book. As they're listening to the their speaker, they're following along in their book. And then maybe sometimes they don't use their book and it's just listening. And then I tell them, pause it, repeat this sentence and repeat maybe a vocabulary word. You know, they can go back and replay it. And then in, in this level, they're practicing annotations. We're teaching them how to annotate. So here are their directions as they're listening. And, to, and reading the book, they're supposed to be actually marking the book. So putting a star next to a, a important ideas, circling new words, here's all the directions. And then what it looks like when a student <clears throat> turns it in, I'm just gonna show you one student that allowed me to show her work And where is it? Let me see here, where's Speed Grader? Let me make this a little smaller so I could, um, here we go. Okay, so it's, this is speed grader and this is how we actually go in and we grade things or you give feedback. I mean, if maybe if you don't actually grade, you could at least provide feedback to the students. And so in this class, I've asked them to make a submission, take a picture of their page in the book and then submit it. And so one student looks like um, this one, for example. So this is her page uploaded and all annotated. And then I can give her her points and I can say, super job, you're annotating well. So a little feedback and she can reply to me here if she wants to. And, um, and then let's see, go back here. So the next part in my module is they would uh, take a vocabulary quiz. So Marcy, Marcy so showed you how the quizzes work. So the vocabulary quiz is based on the vocabulary, of course, in the book that we're reading. And then they would go to a comprehension quiz. So um, again, about the book, some questions about you know basic comprehension. And it's set up just the way Marcy showed. There's just multiple choice questions. You can have essay questions. In that case, the teacher would need to go in and, and grade the essay questions. But if you just have multiple choice, Canvas grades it right then and there. Students see their score immediately. Um, and then we go to next. Um, so now they're going to, this is a reading writing class, so they're, they're practicing actually paragraphs. So we're getting to the paragraph. This is week five. We're just writing our first paragraph. So first I'm going to have them talk about it. And this is a discussion like Marcy showed you. And so they're going to talk about one of the characters in the book, uh, in the book with each other. So I gave them a little picture of Virgil. That's the character in the book. And they have some directions. Tell me three character traits because we're working on character traits and adjectives. So then the one student would come down here and, and, and she copied my question here. 
And then she answered, she's hardworking, emotional, and embarrassing. So, and then they can reply to each other. And, um, and they have little conversations even at the, the, the second level of ESL. And so that, that is a discussion. And so in this class, we're working, as I said, on character traits and adjectives, and they're using adjectives to describe a character in the book in their first paragraph. Um, uh, and then next they would, um, this is, this is a, would be like a wiki page, but it's within Canvas. So this is a page in Canvas and they can share their thoughts. So we're talking about Virgil again, and we're sharing adjectives about Vir Virgil. So students are, put their name here. I always give an example. So my example was about Virgil. She's hopeful. Well, how do I know she's hopeful? Well, I found a quote in the book. So we're, we're teaching them citations too, but this could be used for many different, in many different ways. They could share vocabulary words or they could share pictures. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you a few different ways, but I just wanted to walk you through a module and see how it's built and the activities build on each other. And then the next part would be to, this is a speaking activity now, and I've used Flipgrid for several years now, and this would be like something that maybe you would do later. But like we said, you can work into Canvas just little by little, but I've figured out how to integrate other apps into Canvas. So Flipgrid is integrated. So here are, uh, here is my, um, activity on who's your favorite character in the book and why. So here is the there here are their responses and they all tell us about who their favorite character is so far and why. And so Griselda, I'm just going to share Griselda's. Um, uh, oops. So let me just click on that one. I'm my favorite. Can you hear that, Marcy? Can you hear that? Okay. Character is Gonzalo because he is helpful, smart on loving young men. So the next thing they're going to do is they're going to take their three adjectives that they are they chose to describe one of the characters in the book and they're going to write a paragraph. So on the next part they're actually going to type a paragraph on Word and turn it in and then I'll just go to speed grader and give feedback. So we talked about topic sentences, detail sentences, and a concluding sentence. So we're just doing one paragraph. So I found this funny little video thing, put it all together. So hopefully it kind of makes it less intimidating, lower the effective filter, make it kind of fun for students so they're not all nervous. And, and so um, using these kind of different things that I find. Uh, oh, another thing you can do in Canvas is make a rubric. So this is the rubric for their paragraph. So I can just go in here and for each student, I can click what, um, what, how they did in their paragraph. So I can click here, 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 um, here, and then they'll read it and it'll, it will accumulate their points. So then they'll see their points at the bottom as I click inside of these boxes. Um, so you can integrate rubrics, something maybe later. Again, I didn't, I didn't do this at the beginning, but I've been learning more and more. And then this is kind of a, an, an equity, kind of a, an activity that I do every week. And also, again, I change the little um, GIF here. So every week I do a little humanity check-in because I wanna hear from each student. So I wanna hear a, a question you might have about the week or just tell me all is great, I'm excited or to express any concerns. So this is the way I can connect with each student. And I really look forward to this at, um, of everything every week because this is how the students can really tell me how they're doing. So I get things like, um, oh, I, lo I love the modules this week. I love the book or, oh, the videos were great. Or gosh, Julie, I really didn't understand the present progressive. And so I could, then I can comment back, oh, okay, let me send you a video. Or can you meet me in Zoom? Or a student might say, I had a really bad week. I lost my job and I'm really depressed. And sometimes they open up like that. And so it's a way to, to really get to be able to support each student where they are. And, and then- Julie, where did yeah. you find your rabbit? <laughs> oh, I just Google these things. And I think I actually made this on Canva. So another thing that I made, a lot of these I made because I try to make my own, as much as I can make my own graphic kind of things. I find them on free places because I get a little worried about copyright. So I try and either find them like, um, it's called like, a, um, it's just a common share or something like an OER type of thing. I will, but, I will say something that, um, you know, like I started very basic. So all I knew, I didn't know 
Canva or anything. All I knew was Google images. And so I would just, I, it's out there in Google, so I should be able yeah. to get it. So I would just save it in my, um, you know, yeah. in my PC and then upload it from my PC. And then it would stay there on the canvas page. And, and I will say that any, even in the advanced levels, having illustrations or having animation, so, so great because students get really intimidated by just reading, having a lot to yeah. read. So, the, and the I one, think that the yes. lower level, the you know, my lower level has sometimes more pictures than words. <laughs> and that's great. And one thing we do hear from students is, oh my gosh, there's so much, we have to do so much reading, so much reading on, on Canvas. So trying to break it up a little, not to put too much text on each page. And then um, another thing I do is I, oh, I wrap up at the end of each week. So I'll, again, I change this. Great job, good job, way to go, something like that. And this is a Bitmoji and you can add these in. This might be something you wanna do later, but I just wanted to show you. Um, and then I do a little summary. Great job this week. You read, annotated, cited, discussed, spoke, wrote, and you learned. So hopefully that's a little bit of encouragement and a little summary of, what, of everything they did. Uh, and then next, um, at the end of each module, I also have, a, this is a Padlet. And so I use a lot of Padlets. I love Padlet. I paid for their subscription. Uh, and so students can come on here at the end of the week. If they have a question, they can help each other. So it's kind of community building. And um, it's, um, it's a way for them to ask questions if they don't understand something or they want to get clarification. And they can answer each other. And then I check it too. So the student, for example, said, how do I know if I'm missing any homework? I, th I think I submitted a quiz twice. And so I wrote back and I put my name here so they know that I, I responded. And that, um, so let me go back to modules. So that was one week in uh, the reading, writing integrated course with the grammar. There is a separate one unit class that's grammar support, but I'm not gonna show that. So next I wanted to show some different activities that I've used in different classes. So again, what you saw was one module, one week for one class. And now I have another module with just different items in there from different classes, different activities, just to show you a little bit more about what you can do. So one thing you can do is our, that I like to do are student surveys. At the beginning of the semester, I'll do a survey, a get to know you survey on Canvas. So it'll say like, where are you from? You know, what's your favorite food? Um, um, tell me about yourself, what are your hobbies? And they'll give me all their answers and um, Canvas will give you like kind of like a spreadsheet of all their answers. And for, for just for equity purposes and because I, I care about what my students think and I want their feedback, I do an early semester student survey and so I, I can show you that. And it just says, I want to, I'm doing it right now, actually, this week in one of my classes. I want to know how you're feeling about our class so far. Is there anything I could do to better meet your needs or improve the class? So I've created a survey. And then um, they can just go ahead and if you go to student view, you'll see that they just say, it just says take survey or, or um, complete survey. Um, and I just was going to share what one student wrote. She said, at first, I was worried about the recordings that I had to make with my face. It's always a bit difficult to expose oneself, especially when the language is not spoken well. But when I made the audio recording, I felt more free to expose my ideas. Of course, they stand out. More my diction errors. But in general, that helps me a lot to continue with the class and to pronounce better. Um, and then at the end of the semester, I do a, a final um, final survey and saying, how was your semester? Did you feel welcome? Did you feel, um, did you feel comfortable participating? Um, did you need any support technology-wise? What, 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 could, what could make the class better? So for example, last semester, some of my listening speaking students said, we need more speaking. So I heard that and then I changed this semester and I incorporated more, um, requiring more videos. It's really hard to do speaking. I told them in this environment, <laughs> It's really challenging. If we were in the classroom, we could do lots of speaking and everything. So it just makes it a little more challenging, but they are enjoying the videos. And I tell them, of course, they don't have to show their face if they just want to record their voice. I do a lot of voice recordings for them because sometimes I just don't feel like showing my face or making a video and, I, and that's fine. Um, I, I do say I love to see your face, but, it, but it's okay if you're not going to record with your face this time. I, I will say, that students really appreciate 
our videos seeing okay. I, I get I teach pronunciation too and I get a lot of feedback is like okay. it's so nice to see you okay. <laughs> they feel like there's a real person there yes. so oh Julie you gotta share the weekend stuff yes okay and I just wanted to share that you can also link outside of canvas so this if for my higher level class we're talking about growth mindsets and I have a little quiz here that I found on on, I found it in Google, so it's in a different website, and they get to take a quiz and find their score on how how their growth mindset is. See where your mindset is at. You got to stay till the end, though. It says so. You go all the way to the end. They get the score like twenty four, and it says you you have a higher growth mindset than eighty five percent of American people, or so the Amer the general American population. So they love that. So they'll take the quiz and come back to a discussion and share their results and discuss with each other. And I ask them, were you surprised? Why were you surprised and why not? And so that's outside of Canvas, but it's easy. I've just linked it in there. And then you can also bring in videos as Marcy shared. Um, we do a unit on the green plant on green planet. So I have this book about the garbage bars. It's a, it's a true story, very, very interesting story. And Justin Thoreau happens to be reading and I just found it on YouTube. So I said, oh, well, you know, students can listen to Justin Thoreau reading a book to them. And then down here, I have a few questions to answer that they would, they would t write their answers in the, in the speed grader, uh, the submission way the way they submit. And then here's two little more videos that they can watch for more information about the making of the, of the book. And it, again, it's based on a true story. It's just very interesting and they like that. So adding videos is easy. And I also try and add songs to most of my units. In my reading writing one, I don't have songs. In my grammar part of the reading writing, I add songs. And then when I taught a grammar class, every week I tried to add some sort of song or chant that matched the grammar point that we are teaching. So this, if you're familiar with Car Carolyn Graham's grammar chants, this is one of them. And you can, you know, you can, the students can play it and see the words. And then this was, we were talking about either and neither. So I found this song by Brad Paisley. And you know, there may, maybe not all the students like music. Maybe it just reaches one student, but that one student really, really likes this part of the unit. You know, I had one student, oh, I love the songs, you know? And so even just that one, however we can connect, however we can reach them. And then here's the lyrics. And then um, this, this I did last weekend, actually, on the start of the module, I went bike riding and I thought, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to share with students what, what I did last weekend? They can see we're human, they can see pictures of my family. So I made this like little wiki page and I put it right in the module and I said, how was your weekend? Um, and I told them about my weekend. It was a beautiful weekend. We went bike riding. I love the American River bike trail. And here's a picture of me and my family. Tell us, tell me what you did last weekend. Let's share with each other what you did. So then they can put it right in here. So this, this one student um, put a video. She's actually a Spanish teacher and she makes YouTube videos and I had no idea. And so she shared her video that she made um, teaching Spanish. And then this student went to on a hike in Auburn and he shared the videos of the trail in Auburn. So that was another way to just to build community in the classroom and share with each other. Those are two examples of the, how they responded. This is a video on Rupi Kaur and it looks like I do have a few minutes. So I'm just gonna share this video. I don't know if any of you have heard of her. She is, she was born, she, she's a, she, she was an ESL student here when she was younger. And so she learned English growing up and her parents were immigrants. And she, she wrote this poetry book, but one of her poems is called Broken English. And she talks about her parents and coming here and how she how she felt when she was younger and then she wrote this beautiful poem so this is part in one of my modules in my higher level listening speaking class they listen to her read her poem on the next page they can look at the words of the poem and on the next page they're going to choose their special golden line in the poem what po what part of the poem really reaches them and what part um do they really connect with and then they share that with each other by video on flipgrid again 
So I'll just share a little bit of this one. She's just, I'm just gonna share like one and a half minutes and it's just the introduction. She's talking about kind of why she wrote this poem and how she felt when she was younger. And I, I, I just will say that students love this poem. They all say, well, this, this is me. This, this story is my story. My, my kids laugh at me when I speak English too. I know how she feel, you know, I know how her mother feels. Uh, so um, let me just play a little bit. Or near me, and then we left. And is the sound okay? You want to make it big? Oh yeah. Um, is it too small? I'm just wondering. Right here. Yeah. Me... The sound yeah. is good, Julie. The sound is good. Um, okay. you can make it bigger. It's and fine. then how would I go back to make it smaller? Just um, you just escape? click on the bottom again. The escape okay. key. Yeah. Okay. Or escape. All right. I was so obsessed naturally with trying to fit into the Western culture over there. You know, blonde hair, blue eyes, like perfect English. And I didn't learn English at home because my parents didn't know English. And so when we would like go to the grocery store, my mom would be shouting out, you know, in her accent or Punjabi. And I'd be like, oh my God, mom, you're like so embarrassing. Like, come on, uh, can I just find fit in? And she would just only speak louder and embarrass me more. <laughs> funny because I used to think she's like a form of embarrassment and trust me like every immigrant child like feels that way down there it's just like oh like could you stop could you like try like why can't we just assimilate it's so funny it's like through your teenage years you spend so much time trying to assimilate and then for through your 20s you spend so much time sort of trying to prove to the west house that like, different you are and so broken english is like so important to me because it pays homage to the sacrifices that you know, people have to make when they pick up from whatever home they're at and they leave everything behind land money culture language and they arrive at a foreign place foreign in every single way and they start over especially in our cultures where you know raising children is like you do it within community and how how does one do that all by themselves when you have generations and generations of doing it this one way and suddenly you're doing it alone so it's a really beautiful poem and she goes on to read it so the students can listen to it and they can of course repeat you know go back pause it um, whatever they need. And then on the next page, here are the words to the poem. So now they can see the words. Um, and then the next page, they're going to respond, as I said, with their golden line, because it is a listening, listening speaking class. And I'm trying to get them to do more speaking and not write about their golden lines, but speak about their golden line. So um, this is what this, this, so the directions are right here. Choose your golden line and basically explain why you chose that line. And I just wanted to share a little bit of one student's response. This, you know, this, sorry, this student chose not to show her face and that's fine, at least I can hear her. I do tell them though, I really like to see your face and the way that your, your mouth is forming the English words, but, if, if, but it's okay if you just send me your recording. Um, about the golden line, broken English, I chose um, this. Two universities degree, that means nothing. One mother told that was broken now. One swollen belly with a baby inside. Um, I think it's, a, it's amazing. And I choose um, this phrase or sentence because um, they then talk about me, about me when I was arrived in this country. And I, I have two degrees in the university in my country, and that means nothing here because the language is the principal problem. And one mother told that was broken now is the same because I can speak very fast, the same in Spanish. I can speak and understand very fast in English when I was arrived because I was arrived pregnancy 
and I am very, very worried about me, new body, new country, new language, new food, new everything. And when when the flash one swollen, swollen belly with a baby inside, it's me too. Okay, so I'll just stop there. But she goes on to explain more and more. She She's really feeling passionate about this golden line and how it relates to her life. And the students can watch each other's videos. So it's really a community of support because then they can respond to each other and say, oh gosh, I felt the same way. Or, you know, when they share something, I'm sorry, you know, hard, we, we all have hard times and we can get over them, keep, keep trying or some way to support and encourage each other. Uh, and let's see. Um, another way that we that I just like to kind of show a little bit about myself is that we did a, we did a little unit on um, growth mindset and Warby Parker um, started as a very small company and grew very big and um, it's an eyeglasses company so they watched the video about Warby Parker and its founders and they have some questions to answer and then one day I decided, well, I, I heard we had a Warby Parker in Sacramento, so I went there. So right in the middle of the module, I just popped this in there. Ha, hi, students. Here we are at Warby Parker. Here's my son and nephew. And we went and visited. And, and here's the address. If you ever want to visit, um, you, could see, you could see this shop that you just studied about. And then this is another Padlet assignment. As I said, I really love to use Padlet. I, I paid for the subscription myself. And this is a way that students learned to make their own Padlets. So I gave the directions here. Um, I made a video, how to make your Padlet. And then it, this tells you how to upload. And they did it. They did their own Padlets. They watched the videos. They are, the stu our students are just so amazing, as you all know, how they just they, they just adapt and they learn and they're so, they're so amazing. So they're beautiful Padlets that they shared about their country. So this was one of my students that shared about, um, I think he was from Ukraine and he shared. Let me, yeah. um, let me ask, is that your uh, 530 level? 530, yeah. So this is yeah. a higher level listening. Yeah, I, I want to make it clear because yeah. uh, that is our high intermediate level because my students would not be able to follow yeah. those directions yeah, and do yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. because so it's, just, you know, yeah. it's really it's a, it's a lot of listening. That's 12 minutes of direction. So, um, and but we do have lots of support. So I, I really believe in like, you know, high, high expectations and high support. So they were yeah. able to do it even if they get the tutor's help, or right. the instructional assistant's help. So they ended up being very beautiful. And I can comment, other students comment, what a great quality you have. Your picture gave me curiosity about the delicatessen of your country. So they can see foods and everything. And um, this student was from Brazil, Marcy. So she put a lot of pictures from Brazil, her hobbies. I told him to make three categories. And so oh, another way of sharing class building, community building. And um, I think I just have a couple more. Um, at the beginning of the semester, another Padlet. We, in the classroom, oftentimes we do our classroom norms together. Let's think about the, our, our norms and what we want from each other, what we want from the teachers, what helps you learn. So it, because we were, are remote, I had the students in my higher level class make their own classroom norms Padlet. So they just click on also, the little pencil and they just add a comment. When you go on Zoom, you can give them the instructions again on Zoom. Yes. Right? You can, yeah. 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 And you, can even, you can even do a Padlet. I've done Padlets on Zoom live and with my lowest level class, and it works wonderfully. They can just add to the Padlet right there on Zoom. But this so, one, they so did. Padlet is a separate, they're asking, it's a separate subscription that Julie has. It's um, kind of an add-on. I just wanted to show you kind of what things you can think about in the future doing if you end up going with Canvas. So Padlet is a, 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 a website. You can make these Padlets. Um, let's see, this is another wiki page. And there, we were talking, this is a grammar point. So I tried to integrate, you know, a grammar point with something interesting that they can do with it um, to make it fun and engaging. So that we did modals and I asked them to, to use their modals but give travel advice. So they added, I tell, you know, of course there's directions on how to do this. And then they, 
I always give an example. So I said, Julie, Tokyo, I lived in Japan, taught English there. So I made this for my example. And I, so I use my modal, you need to visit Asakusa Shrine. So when the students finished this page, it was very beautiful, filled with these gorgeous pictures and then some using their modals to give travel advice. And this was a higher level grammar course, but you basically you just click the edit button and you're able to go in there. It's very simple. All, even our lowest level, my reading, writing, lowest level can do it. Second lowest level. Okay. And then that's just an example. I think we're just about done. Yep. And that's it. So we have time for questions. Perfect timing, Marcy. We did perfect timing. I'm just going to stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Padlet, is your Padlet on your Canvas? I've, I've integrated it, I embedded it. So Padlet's very pretty easy to embed from, from the website into Canvas. And I, I think I found my rabbit on Canva. I believe that I found that rabbit and I created that, that little um, sort of um, header thing. I think I made that on Canva. Canva is, they have a free part and then they have a paid part that, a paid aspect to it. Or, so you can get more, you know, if you pay, you get more features. So Krista was asking if it's difficult. Well, like I said, uh, what I really love about it is the ability of, uh, you can start using it at your own comfort level and I'm not techie. So I will say, no, I don't think Canva is, Canvas <laughs> sorry, is difficult at all. Um, and but, I think, yeah. But you can work, work, start little, you know, like Marcy mm -hmm. said, if you just make a little quiz with a few questions with just words, and then maybe like later you're like, well, I think I know how to add a picture. So I might add a picture now, little by little, you can learn more and add more. So they're asking, they're asking Julie, if this is the paid version of Canvas. Um, so we, we're at Sierra College and we were provided with, you know, this is provided by the college. And I believe- I, I, I think there's someone here, Abram, if you're here, I believe I had a discussion with you and you were using a free version. I'm not aware of a free version, but I did hear from Abram that he has a free, um, free canvas teacher version that he got yeah that's right it's a canvas free for teachers and if you just go to canvas.instructure.com you can uh, create an account and the same thing for your students there are separate apps too there's canvas teacher and canvas student that you can right. use on your phones so is, right. is it lim do you know if it's like limited on what you can do in the free version or what they don't have some of the fancy bells and whistles like you guys do at sierra <laughs> they don't have um uh, studio and a couple of other things okay. but right every, right all the basic functionality is there. Right, I will say that, for example, for many, I just started using, to be transparent, honest here, I just started using Studio when we went online because I was told that I had to for compliance. Before I had Studio, I thought listening, speaking. So what I would do without Studio is I would just record my video right on the page on Canvas and then summarize, um, uh, like do a script and type it or add a script to the page. So I didn't do closed captioning before we were forced to be compliant and go online because I had never used Studio. So if you don't have Studio, you can still uh, make your videos and do a sort of a transcript mm -hmm. for them. Um, it's a little bit more difficult, uh, but it's totally possible. And that's what I did for 15 years. <laughs> So Abram, when you use the free version, were you able to go to Canvas Commons and download the, the materials that teachers share? It's like Canvas Commons is like the teacher share spot. So I've actually um, put some stuff. I, I put my whole grammar course on the Commons. So anybody that wants to just use my grammar course for the whole semester can just download it into their Canvas. And so you can share things that way and download and you can access it. Yeah, this was one thing that I was pretty concerned about because I use four different Canvas implementations and um, I do a lot of exporting. You can just look for my name on Canvas Commons and find a bunch of stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it's just one Commons. So no matter what implementation you've got, it, it's all shared. Okay. All right. You can just use We have the link on chat right now. Yes, good. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Any, any other questions? Oh, Nada, your hand is up. 
I just wanted to share the link to Canvas Commons, and I'm actually going to share the link to Julie's uh, module that's located on Canvas Commons as well. I was just going to add to, um, yeah, like Abram said, there are some bells and whistles to what, you know, quote unquote, is the bells and whistles piece of Canvas, which is the paid version, um, and then the Canvas Commons, which is free. Um, and you can find already made modules on there as well. I may have some student work hiding in there. I tried to pick out the ones that told me that I could share, but um, I'm not sure if I should, if it's, if I'm ready to share the whole module. Let me see. But I, I think the ones that are in there are the ones that told me I could share, but especially the ones I shared with you, the video and then the, the, um, the student annotated page. Those students definitely gave me permission. And Julie, it is already, it's actually live on there. All you have to do is search for your name. It is already available. Oh, okay, good. Okay. Wait. Oh, so you shared my resources, not the module I just shared, right? Whatever is located on the Canvas Commons. Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fine. That's totally fine. Yeah, those all the students. So when you, when I submitted my, or when I gave, I don't know, shared my grammar course with Canvas Commons, all of your student work is taken off except my wiki pages. That I have to go in and, elite and erase all my student comments before I share it. But everything else is, your student's work is not attached to anything. So the, their quizzes won't show up and, and their discussion posts won't show up if you share to the comments. Thank you. Yeah, you could just go to Canvas Commons and put my name in and you'll see what I've shared. I shared um, some of my surveys, student surveys, and some other modules and materials. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see how many hours is your one week how many hours is your one week module so Dominica hi Dominica um let's see so remember it's a little bit tricky because our zooms are optional so I do have zoom sessions they're not very well attended sometimes but we still hold them because they are optional because we understand that students it's a hard time right now and they may not be able to make it to the session so i offer um zoom sessions three hours a week for my five unit reading and writing class and then my mod we're supposed to give about double the time in homework so i i'm thinking the module might take my students five to about five to ten hours to do all the work in there um, and, and like I said, some of them don't ever come to Zoom. So it's, it's it, it, the way I see them is through Canvas. Does, does that answer your question, Dominica? Yes, thank you, Julie. <laughs> okay, thank you. And was there some, so Renee, you said, are you able to share the student training materials? We have some video, we're, we're actually working on making, we're still, it's a work in progress because we're trying to still support and see what students need and how we can best you know, reach them and bridge Canvas to entering the, the campus, you know, the onboarding. We're still working on that. So we do have a lot of directions in our Canvas modules on like Marcy showed how- I mean, you know, I, I, I could show a little, uh, I could show a little bit of it just for the sake of time. I don't know how but, much- But let me see, let me just see if I re answered the question. So student training materials. So I guess, the, the most helpful thing that we're thinking right now is these tutorials for ESL students. So like how to see the feedback the teacher gives you. That's super important and really hard for students to find that feedback. It's a skill. We have to tell them every time I Zoom, I show them where is your feedback? Where is your feedback? Let's look at where is feedback. And so that they can, they can finally do it on their own. So and, and another thing that we do very often is we record our Zoom sessions and then we um, import and post uh, in our mod inside our modules, so students who didn't come to Zoom can watch. Those. So we're still we we have we have some items um, on student training, but we are still developing some. We're working with the campus to help us get more videos out to help students more. That's great, thank you. I was just curious about the structure, how you are structuring your support for students. So just maybe as you move forward, we can stay in touch yes, and, yes. and share that information with one another. Thanks. And they, they might end up on, on, we have a Sierra College YouTube site. I wonder if are you, I, probably our tutorials will end up on there, I would think. So we'll be in touch. Thank you. So, let's see, any more? I don't see any more. Don't forget to, okay, to make sure you complete the evaluation. 
And then if, if there are any more questions. I, I will say something really quick. My son, you know, um, he used Google Classrooms in high school and then uh, went to a college with Canvas. And um, he thought it was so easy to use Canvas as compared to Google Classroom. I oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're used to it. It's hard. It's it is hard to, to learn. I don't know. Sometimes it can be hard to learn both systems. I feel like, but um, but it's doable with training. It's a little training support. Thank you for coming. I hope it was valuable for you and you took away a thing or two.